Good evening, Zero K fans! Sorry about that slight delay in the opening of the stream. For YouTube viewers, well, you're none the wiser. We are about to begin. It is going to be a match between Drone and Pildas, an exhibition match. This is going to be a fairly long one. Normally on long ones, I'll say, go get popcorn. No, this is, go get a three-course meal. I recommend starting with a Caesar salad, followed by a main course of lobster ravioli with garlic bread, and then finished off with a nice chocolate pate drenched in creme anglaise. But that's just me. Oh, Floris wants out. I forgot to mention, I am Shadow Fury CC3. The one who is watching. I mean, well, yeah, spectating. That's what I'm doing. So, without further ado, let us get to the map, just so I can show it up before we do, before the game starts. This map, Hide and Seek, is probably the most cliff oriented map. I mean, it's not the one of the highest elevation differences, but it's the one that has the most. Seriously, all of these cliffs. All these really extreme elevation changes. It's really nice. It's great for Spiderbot Factory. Although you often do see Cloaky. We are we are seeing a Cloaky mirror here, but Spiderbots come up a lot on this map. This map and Tartarus are probably the two that are the most spider focused. And this map also sports basically two different types of metal extractors. There are plus 2.7s, but it's basically plus 2.4 and plus 1.3. The plus 1.3s are what make up the probably the main base. Plus 2.4s are a bit rarer. There is one in each main base, as well as ones over in the corners. But for the most part, you're dealing with 1.3. The corners are the only real valuable section, and the center as well. So areas that are harder to get to or harder to defend are made a bit more valuable. It's an interesting thing, though, because it's worth pointing out, this 2.4 is probably the thing you need to get first. And both Drone and Feltos know this, they have both gone for it. So let's just get the game. Oh, and Flores pointing out, it's, it's Flores' map. Yes. Cool map. Anyway, the drone starting out. Well, mention as Cloaky. Both players as Cloaky. Failthos going for one glaive rather than two. One glaive before constructor. So, Failthos being very keen to make sure that they actually have a nice economic start. Drone, on the other hand, relying more on their commander for the economic start and focusing a bit more on military, but not by much. They're basically just assuming that Failthos is going to be attacking them lightly, and they're right. Drone is actually going to win out in this engagement. This this setup of glaives here, that's really where it's going to come down to. And it doesn't matter. Drone's able to get through. Feltos doesn't kill Drone's glaive. Drone doesn't kill Feltos's. And Feltos has to now deal with two glaives coming in, only having one and a defender. So they will be able to defend. Although, admittedly, that defender does not cover this back metal expansion, which is the most important one. And Feltos, they are setting their glaive back. They know it. They defend the 2.4217. And Feltos also attacking Drone. Their glaive taking a fair amount of damage, able to escape before getting killed, but not able to do any damage. And Drone, going around the back, going to take that valuable metal extractor while distracting from the front, actually able to take on a metal extractor for free anyway. Two metal extractors for free, that's four metal right off the bat that's been harassed out. Now this plus 2.7, Drone is going for it. They're assuming that it exists, and they are right, but it is not going to pay off as well. They are going to be able to get it, they are going to be able to... Well, they have to micro it, that's the thing. They need to win this micro with the glaive, and they need to do it fast. Actually, no, they're not even going to be able to do it fast enough. This is Failthos' territory. Drone is going to have to come with more firepower to be able to deal with that. Oh, and Flores pointing out this was actually made for XTA, in which there are no all-terrain units. It works for all-terrain units, but I'm guessing the cliffs were there to actually block off, in a very, very convincing and hard way, any all-terrain units. Of course, in 0K, in order to fully block off units, you need to have a ditch filled with water. That's the only way to do it. Amphibs and hovers won't be able to get through it because it's too steep. And spiders won't be able to get through it because there's water. Although jump bots will be able to still get over it if it's not wide enough. But that can usually be okay. You can still build around that. But that's the only way to do it. Trojan Hills, Bandit Plains, and Iced Coffee are the only maps that actually take advantage. Actually, no, Bandit Plains and Iced Coffee. Trojan Hills doesn't have the water in, in the ditches. just has the ditches. Those are the only maps to take advantage of it. Anyway, Flores... Not Flores. <laughs> Flores not playing. Drone does lose a Conjurer, trying to get the plus 2.7. So right now, Felthos remains ahead. They've rebuilt the Metal Extractors that were harassed. They've harassed a bit of their own. They've stopped Metal Extractors from being constructed in the first place. But this is still neck and neck. It's very even. Neither player really giving too much ground either way. Drone, however, did just lose their ability to harass in the back. So Felthos has a lot of freedom. Not total freedom. There is still this one drone over in the northeast corner. But a lot of freedom has been gained for Felthos to expand. And Felthos 
Trying to push out the last few drones that... Sorry, last few glaives that drone has sent. Now, drone... They are continuing to go for glaives. They are... They have not left the raider station. I don't think they will for a long time. I honestly would be surprised if they left the raider station before the 10 minute mark. Just because the way the map is built. This entire outside perimeter, you need to have raiders to be able to scout it out all the time to make sure your opponent is not getting greedy. Otherwise, they're just going to grab it. So you have to make sure you have something going around. Just that your opponent respects your offensive potential. Otherwise, they're just going to build around and there's nothing you can do. And Feldas, however, actually... How many glaives does Feldas have? Feldas has these six. And Drone has what looks like about... Oops. Drone has what looks like about six or seven. So Drone right now is only ahead militarily because their commander has been upgraded. Or no, their commander has been upgraded. What am I saying? Their commander is level one. They do have apparently 200 extra metal worth of military. But it won't matter very soon if Feldas isn't careful. Feldas running right into Drone's territory. Drone is going to be able to tear this apart. Although Feldas... I mean, they are actually kind of keeping Drone back somewhat. They have Glaives around. They're making sure that Drone has a harder time getting around and expanding. On the other hand, Feldas... They have only this one Glaive to worry about. That's it. Drone... They will know if there's an expansion over here. This is the most valuable area, so it's worth doing. But all of these metal extractors, and this one over here as well, this 2.4 right here... Those are open. Feldos can take them at their leisure. So whenever they want to do so, they will. And Feldos coming around the back, trying to harass out this plus 2.7, with Drone still has not taken this, and Feldos remaining slightly ahead, getting rid of more and more defenders. I mean, they have enough, they have enough glaives, they can bum rush defenders now. They lose a couple of they lose a couple of glaives in the process, but it's worth it. They've cracked open this entire area. It makes it even that much harder for Drone to expand here. Going over to the west side of the map, I don't know if they're aware that the commander's there. I don't think they are. If I... Where to, there we go. But we're to see where their commander... No, they have no real knowledge yet. What are they going to do when they find out, though? I think they're probably going to keep going. Let's see, they know the constructor, they know the commander. They have not changed their attention. I don't know if they're... Are they paying attention? No, they're not paying attention to that side of the map. They are just going back to it right as the most of the glaives die. Just missing that as it happens. Rather unfortunate. But that's how it went down. Felthos unfortunately lost all of those glaives. They would have been best served going along the west The west here. That would have been the best thing to do. There's nothing else they really could have done otherwise, because the problem is that they... Like, going along here, they couldn't have killed that. At all. There was just no way. So, the way they did it was one of the better ways to do... Or, the way they did it was a bad way to do it. Over here, if they knew, like, if they had reacted, they probably would have fallen back, tried to go along here, and continued to harass around the side. And now, Drone getting chased out. Feldas now has a great chance to take the northeast corner of the map. Setting a few glaives for defense, and where is that Conjurer? There is that Conjurer, in the main base, moving forward to the northeast. And Drone? Now they're... Well, they have to deal with Warriors now. Drone has not... Oh, Drone is starting to build Warriors, and this is the 6-minute mark, so... I don't know if we're out of the Raider phase quite yet, but yeah, this is actually a little bit earlier than I expected. Drone is building a Warrior, and that will be... That will be necessary. That... Actually, I think Drone probably assumed that Failthos is continuing into the Raider phase. They are aware now of the Warriors coming in. How long will it be until Rocco? That's what I want to know. And the answer is indeterminate. Drone is going for a gunship plant over on the western side of the map. Commander setting that up. It... Ooh, this stage in the game. I could see Rapiers. I could totally see Rapiers. I think that's what they're going to try to do to get rid of everything. Warriors and Glaives. So Drone trying to get around here. Drone does know that there's a Warrior here. They are fully aware of this Warrior, and they... They're not moving away. Okay. Are they moving away? No, those glaives are going on autopilot. Drone not paying as much attention to that as they probably should. And losing all of their glaives in the process. I mean, on a map this size, paying attention to everything is very difficult. So I'm not trying to get... I'm not trying to harp too much on Drone. It's That is a hard thing to do. It's just worth knowing to know why a glaive or a set of glaives or any units died is... Were their, were their controllers paying attention? And if the answer is no, well, that explains it. And you don't have to always, obviously. 0k is the kind of game where if you don't pay attention to a unit, it'll still do something. It just might not do the best thing. It might get itself killed. At any rate, Drone still remaining fairly on par, but they are falling behind ever so slightly in terms of territory. I mean, Failthos, they're harassing pretty much with impunity. I think this Nuzlocke is going to win. 
but they're harassing pretty well. They're taking out metal extractors left and right. This plus 27 still hasn't been claimed yet. Drone is behind by about six. Failthos, I mean, this gunship plant, that's the biggest asset the drone's going to have. If they, they can pull back with that gunship plant. They are nowhere near out. It's just they're at a slight disadvantage. Like slightly in terms of economy and military, it will compound over time, but if they're able to harass effectively with the rapiers, or whatever they use, presumably rapiers, that is the popular thing. That is the meta nowadays. But it is... Yeah, sorry, the thing with... Okay, if you're wondering about the mech circles, yeah, the mech circles are actually... It's blue or teal for the current active player, and then red for everyone else. It's a little bit basic. I've looked into it, but it's actually a lot harder to change than it... You'd have to rewrite most of the mech display code in order for that to change, I think. Or, wait, no, I'm thinking of a different... I'm thinking of one of the selection widgets, my mistake. The mech's display code require, would require still a little bit more tampering in order to make it team color based and not just active player is blue or active player steel. Anyway, rapiers, that is the choice. But it has been spot or failed us. Do they know? I'm pretty sure they do. That I mean they hit something. Yeah, failed us knows. They probably know that their gunships coming in. Are they building up anti-air? Yes, they are. They have gremlins coming up, so they are prepared. Or at least they will be very soon. Yeah, alt, alt clicked gremlins, orange number there, by the way. In case you're wondering, the orange number means that the units in question were built basically emergency built. Like, you can build units without putting them in a queue. And they'll just go up the front. They'll only be built once. They won't be put into a repeat queue, but they will still be... It's basically... If it's orange, it's because they went for it in an emergency. Or at least they wanted to do that as a one-off, which usually means in an emergency. However, the Warriors will be able to defend against... Any of the glaives, no problem. And there are Rockos as well. Drone has gotten Rockos. They have quite a few, actually, at this point. Though, Failthos right now is... I mean, they have Rockos, Glaives, Warriors. They have a full bread and butter set for everything. Everything for Cloak and Buff Factory. Of course, they're also going for Air Switch. They haven't gone for anything specialized. No ticks. They have some Gremlins, of course, that is going to be useful for the Rapiers. And this is where Drone is going to see if they can pull it back completely. Get rid of that advantage. I mean, there's a 1k, mil 1K military advantage. The economic advantage is kind of turned around, but I think that's Reclaim. Oh no, actually, no it's not! No, Drone has in fact just gone very aggressive on their expansions. Naked expansion along the south side of the map, while the Rapiers attack and Hawks get rid of the Rapiers. The Rapiers have done quite a bit of damage. Taking out metal extractors everywhere, and this is... At the same time though, Felthos is harassing out what Drone put down. All the stuff, all those naked expansions. That risky play. And surprisingly, these... These Rockos are non-fight order. The two that just died. They were standing still. They... Like, fight order is basically how Rockos beat warriors. That, or you pay attention to them and keep them out of range. Kite them manually. But yeah, kiting is how they win. That was, an, that was a little odd. Regardless, the harassment has been successful over the north. So if we just go over to the north, we see... Failthos did lose a couple metal extractors. Drone has lost quite a few over to the south. Drone actually lost several to the south to these glaives as well. But continue to try to harass to the north, trying to take out more to the north, but Feldas has done a lot more defense work. And now going to where those... Oh, Trinents. Oh, that is not the best choice. Trying to go exactly to where those gunships are being built from. This is going to be a complete wreck. I mean, Drone is going to lose everything here. Their commander, their lotuses, everything. The solar collector is about the only thing that's, that even gives them a chance of surviving. But if they lose those Lotuses, every Lotus they lose, that just makes it that much easier for Drone to get in. Sorry, for Feldhaus to get in. And Feldhaus, they have the factory locked down. That's their biggest target. They want to kill the factory. Everything else, it's good to kill, but the factory is the biggest target. However, they are pulling back. Feldhaus, not confident they can take this out. Which, it would be a very tough thing to do. It It's kind of a luck thing. They could sort of, if they were, if they managed to get it just right. It would it would be a very difficult thing to pull off. They might be able to, but I wouldn't have gone. I wouldn't go for it necessarily. I don't. I do not fault fail thoughts for not going for it for pulling back. That's that was a prudent move. Although at this point, the players are once again relatively even. Drone has a slight economic advantage, but still way behind militarily. Fail thoughts, however, because most of the military is in rather heavy units like warriors, they're gonna have a harder time getting around the map. So drone right now. If they are able to keep tr tabs on where their opponents are, and actually they have sights trying to take full advantage of that too, if they keep tabs on where their opponents are, then they have a great time. They'll have a great chance of actually completely destroying what Failthos has built up. I mean, Failthos 
their units can very easily get out of position. That's my point. And that very nearly happened, although unfortunately hitting the main base like that, not the best target, I'm afraid. A good target. I mean, it's definitely good to see what's going on. I think that that scythe was probably best... That was a scout. That was a scout scythe. That wasn't... Drone, I'm sure, knew that wasn't going to take out the main base, but they would want to know what's in there. They want to know how it's set up. They want to know what's been built up, how much overdrive has been being built, what units are there, or what rather, what factories are there. I mean, they know about the air factory and the cloakabout factory, but that may not be everything. And now, a slew of tridents coming out. I mean, Drone really keen on getting rid of the air, but not particularly keen on the ground harassment. And Felthos countered that directly. They built a bunch of gremlins, so Felthos, yeah, they're going to be able to take out those tridents without issue. Uh, they haven't gone for really a whole lot of air units. They have a few hawks here and there. They are continuing to build them, but keeping them out of the way, and the gremlins are just able to completely discourage all these tridents from getting in. Get out of there! Get out of there, you tridents! And the Hawks finishing them off. I mean, the Hawks, this is a bad idea. The Hawks can't fight Tridents. That's the whole point. Ah, oh, three Hawks go down for free. Fail to us. That was a, that was a mistake. That's, that was 900 metal right though. That was, that was the 1000 metal advantage Fail to us had. Crashing into the ground thanks to the Tridents. So the game has once again evened out. Over to the northwest, we see that drone Fail to us. Having a bit of a warrior fight, looks like Drone is actually going to lose this ultimately. Felthos was losing at first, but Drone having only defenders and one warrior left, and the warriors can just tank defenders and tear them apart. That's not going to work. Over to the southeast, Drone's Glaive is coming in, trying to get rid of Felthos's taking of this expansion that Drone originally took. Getting rid of a Conjurer too, Felthos missing that, focusing probably too much on, well, focusing not too much on that, but focusing on their main base primarily. So Felthos able to get rid of the Northwest, so the Northwest and Southeast Center expansions have both been destroyed. But once again, Trident's getting rid of more and more of the Hawks. How many Hawks are even left? Like, there's five Hawks left. Felthos continuing to build Hawks, but this is really, really tough on their numbers. However, it looks like all the Tridents have gone down, now it's just down to the Banshees, and the Banshees do not hold up and get torn to shreds. And a Scythe for Felthos, because why not? Two sites for Felthos. Felthos is the only one with sites at the moment for that extra little bit of firepower. Now, this, I mean, the fact that this area has been so well defended means the main base is going to be very easy to attack. And I think that Felthos, are they going to go for that? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they're thinking that the main base is going to be well defended enough that there's not much point going there. But they might decide to go for it. It'll be interesting if they do. Oh yeah, also, Soul Collectors, Soul Collectors. I actually don't know why that's not showing. There does seem to be some bug with the economy display. I'm not sure if it's an engine-based thing or what. It's something to look into. But I'm going to be busy this evening, so I'm not going to be able to do it, unfortunately. I mean, not today, at least. And I'd like to get the economy tutorial done tomorrow. Like, I know I meant, to, I meant to do it weeks ago. I got sick. I recovered. I should have time tomorrow. I should be free tomorrow, so it should be fine. I'd like to do that tomorrow, but we'll see. At any rate, usually after I do a cast, if there's any bugs, they get fixed. Like, people watch it and go, oh, a Google Frog usually watches it and goes, oh, well, that's the thing I can fix. Okay, or Exponent, or... I think that those are the main two that tend to be fixing the bugs a lot. I mean, there's other people, too. There's a lot of other devs. Car Repair hasn't done much recently, as far as I can think. Car Repair is mostly working on their own project, I think. But anyway, back to the game. Failthos and Drone... Failthos trying to go in. It looks like they're trying to go in for the kill right now. The sharpshooters are going to be a bit of a problem. Almost got hit by that Rocco shot, but not quite. However, Felthos, they do not have the best unit composition for dealing with this. A lot of Roccos. Drone is in a great position for dealing with all of these warriors. And Felthos, realizing that, goes off to the side, tries to take out what army they can, but really, they need to harass them all in the sides, and they are harassing along the sides. That is what they're doing. Correct op option. And another set of Tridents haven't been built up. Hawks come in to get rid of them, and they're actually going down now. The Tridents can only do so much in the low numbers. So the Hawks really, at this point, could pretty much start locking down the gunship plant, and they are effectively doing so. I mean, the gunship plant has only been building Tridents. Basically, everything Drone has been trying to do has been trying to deal with these Hawks. Rather than trying to harass with Rapiers and Banshees as they were originally trying to do, the whole point of building that in the first place was to get those Rapiers and Banshees to harass with. That was the entire reason they did it. And at this point, that purpose has been rather defeated. Now, over to the southeast... Felthos just locking this area down as best they can. Drone as well. This this front is pretty much stalemated. There's no easy way for either player to take it out. Some artillery would do it, but that's not likely to happen. And over to the southwest, wow. Drone has basically taken this area. Like, drone has secured this area to the northwest. 
And actually over to the southwest too. Well, actually the southwest isn't very secure. That could be taken out easily, but in the northwest area, that is totally safe. It's highly unlikely that Failtoss is even going to bother going for that anymore. Which is pretty good for Drone too, because that's plus 2.4. That's plus 4.8. That's a lot of metal right there. Oh, Timo Timo, it's a video. I have a video. I have it scripted out already. I just need to record it and edit it. The tough part is going to be the editing parts. I don't have particularly good video editing software at the moment. And I don't really feel like paying another 10 bucks a month for Adobe Premiere. Not unless I was doing a lot of these. Which, admittedly, I probably would be well served to do so. Well, regardless, back to the game. Drone, these sharp, this sharpshooter, how much, how much does the sharpshooter kill, actually? I don't know. There's nothing that actually shows in the stats showing what, what has been killed, like how much cost has been made. All you can see is the little, is the little thing overhead saying, well, it's made one times, two times, X times cost. And that, it hasn't made one times cost yet. But Fail Thoughts, they have taken air control, they are spending air control, and even with spending air control on the bombers, they still have air control. So they can start just ripping apart these def I mean, the defenders know. Actually, the defenders, that's a big problem. Defenders are always a problem. This is why the Northwest is secure. There's no way to really get up there. Nothing easy, nothing short of a missile silo. Like an Inferno, that would tear this apart. That's about it. And a sharpshooter over in the main base. Drone completely uncontested, trying to take out caretakers. Taking, I, mean, I don't even know if this is contested. No, they're just... Oh, that is unfortunate. If this was... How far is that to be? No, it could take out the caretakers. Why is it not taking the caretakers? Oh, drone can't see it. Sharpshooter cannot see that far. That's the problem. And drone isn't paying attention to that one. And now it goes down, which is... Oh, man, that, that could have killed off caretakers. That could have killed off factories. They could have killed off both factories if it was right here. That would have been a powerful place to put it. Sadly, though, drone is not paying as much attention to that as warranted. But it doesn't really matter though. Drone is taking the territory. They're surrounding Felthos very slowly. Felthos kind of secured. They've secured the southeast as well. I mean, it's still fairly even, but Drone has a very nice place. To, like, they have this firebase over here. They have another firebase over here. I mean, they have a couple of very strong positions outside of the main base. While Felthos, on the other hand, they've strengthened their main base decently, and they have a few scattered positions around the map. But they're far less focused. There's far less of a place they can really fall back to, guaranteed. I mean, admittedly, this one's being slowly chipped away, but the firebase over to the west with the factory, that's going to be very hard to take out. And Drone now deciding they can go back to Rapiers. Which, admittedly, no, they can't. I mean, there's still Hawks around the map, but they might as well. I mean, yeah, there are still four Hawks around the map, and Rapiers are still going to be a problem. But at least the Rapiers, unlike Tridents, can hit stuff on the ground. And there are still a few Tridents for support. How many Tridents are there, anyway? Oh, there's still half a dozen. Okay, so I guess Drone just built enough and decided they have enough. Yeah, these sharpshooters, they're doing quite a good work. And sharpshooters are always very powerful units. It's just, at this point, Felthos is slowly but surely losing units left and right. And just here and there are losing units. Over the center, losing some units. Over down here we have... Well, Drone deciding they really want to go anti-warrior. I mean, at this point... I honestly am not... I mean, I can kind of see why they do that. I'm a bit surprised they aren't doing that plus Glaives. Like, they're doing just Rockos. Because Rocco versus Rocco kind of leaves the other... the Rockos that don't have support open for being hit by support units. Whereas Rocco and Glaive, as soon as you take out the Warriors, and even before then, but definitely once you do, you can take out the rest of the Rockos with Glaives. While their Rockos are distracted trying to dance around your Rockos. Anyway, Drone... They're going to go take... They're trying to take the Northwest. They want to take the Northwest. They want to completely have it. They have the Southeast. They can't easily take this hill, but that's about it. Everything else they basically have. Same with Veiltoss. We are out of the Raider phase, officially. I mean, we've been out of it for a little while now, but definitely out of it now. It's very consolidated. And hammers are coming in. I'm a little surprised it took this long, actually. A couple of hammers, especially given how much defenses there are. Veiltoss must have been very concerned about counter forces coming in along the ground. It is definitely something that you need to be mindful of, but these hammers, this base, the hammers are going to win. The only problem is this force coming in over the hill. Failthos in a much worse position for dealing with that being at the bottom of the hill. They can get rid of the sharpshooters, but the Rockos are at the top of the hill, so for every one of those Rockos, it becomes that much harder to get around. I think, though, I th no, Drone can see beyond the hill, no problem. Yeah, Drone can see over that hill fairly well. 
So the Rocco's actually now being pushed back down to the base of the hill. Feldhaus has secured this area, and once those hammers get in position, this firebase over here is gone. And so it begins, hammers coming in, for some reason going for the Rocco's, probably due to radar. I don't think... No, Feldhaus, they know. There actually is no radar there. But yeah, they know that's a Rocco. But those hammers, if they start hitting the... Once they start hitting the defenders, not if, once. When they start hitting the defenders, it's going to go and... Another attack in the main base. Drone, the way they've set themselves up, their main base is actually fairly vulnerable. I think Drone's going to lose their main base. Let's see. Zeus, Rocco... Yeah, Drone's main base is gone. There's the Zeus, and that's it. That is the only opposition. And whatever's being built in the factory. Mostly Conjurers. If that factory goes down... Actually, the Caretakers are the bigger... Those are the bigger targets, but I think... Once the Lotus is down, that's going to be about it. The Caretakers desperately building up Lotuses... But, I mean, that's the thing. The characters go down, the Lotuses go down. There's still a large enough army, and the factory is almost dead. The factory only has five... There we go! The factory is down! So, Drone has lost their main base. Felthus, taking that out and starting... I'm not even starting to. They've actually pulled ahead quite a bit militarily. But definitely in terms of position. However, a crow came in and started to try to ruin Felthus's day. Of course, Felthus has enough hawks that this is going to be probably a lot easier. We saw a crow last time in the 2v2 tournament, and that is... This is rare. We don't often see crows, but we saw them in a 2v2 tournament. But in that particular game, that was on a map that had a lot of very, very... Okay, it was hilly with a lot of choke points. But it was built up in such a way that it was a lot easier to set up an air defense because it was side by side. This is corner to corner, so there's a lot more approach angles. And now the firebase has gone down, so two of Drone's bases have gone down. Drone is still fairly in a good position economically. They still have the gunship factory. They still have a shield bot factory, actually. They have... Oops. Oh, whoops. It looks like that's what I want. You can, you can unselect now. Yeah, they still have the shield bot factory, so that's a new one. They just built that. Looks like they're probably going to... I think I'm going to go for a felon ball or probably bandits, I would think. A felon ball would be kind of tough to maintain in this particular situation. There are a lot of heavy units, and felons don't do particularly well against heavy units. They run out of shields, and that's about it. Now, racketeers... Racketeers, I would expect. That would be the thing I would go for, but I don't see that happening. I do see uh, the Hawk going for that. They're going for the Crow, and the Crow being defended by the Tridents quite well. But even then, there's so many Hawks coming in here that that Crow, that needs to fall back to defend. And I think the Hawks are going to go on a suicide mission. Not the best option. They did ultimately not succeed, but they did push the Crow back, leaving Feldhaus's forces, the rest of Feldhaus's forces, with basically no opposition. There was a lot of naked expansion going on here. There's a lot of metal that can be harassed out. Drone does have a military advantage now that they've taken... I mean, massive one. Now that they've taken out those Hawks. But there's going to be more and more Hawks being built up, especially given that Philthos has the economic advantage and does have a lot of dedicated anti-air. Tons of Gremlins. Tons of Hawks. They're just building loads of Hawks. At this point, for eight, they're building one every 15 seconds. And that Crow is not being repaired. Interestingly enough, that Crow is not being repaired. Instead, Drone focusing entirely on building up an army of tridents and rapiers to keep that crow alive. Okay, now the crow is going back for repairs. Because that was very surprising. That did not get repaired sooner. I mean, Drone has a lot... What is Drone paying attention to right now? Drone is paying attention to that crow. They are setting up that crow. I really wish that the new version of Spring didn't screw up the camera mechanics of the free... The free camera, because this is a big annoyance. It shouldn't be doing that. Belthos, at any rate, able to take out that south side, able to retake, able to take the south side for themselves. And that belongs to them now. And all this... <laughs> Rapier's coming in to tear apart that harassment force. And at this point, the Gremlin's being attacked. Gremlin's actually being quite heavily damaged. Bandits came in, started attacking the Gremlins, but there are still a good dozen and a bit Gremlins. So... Oh wait, no, those are both drones and Felthos's. It's actually fairly even. Felthos only has about eight now. Drone has built up, looks like about, about six, yeah, half a dozen gremlins, but there are no, there's no Kaligabot for Drone yet, or, well, there is now, it's been rebuilt, and Drone, in fact, going for a Felon Ball, interestingly enough, they are, despite the fact that they're fighting a lot of heavy units, going for that Felon Ball, Bandit support, yes, but still going for the Felon Ball, Felon Convict from the looks of it, no thugs, just Felon Convict, or maybe just pure Felon. And that is going to be interesting. Felon Convict is a very risky one. I mentioned, I've shown it before. I've mentioned before, when you do Felon Convict, you're relying entirely on felons. The convicts are just there to provide ammo. That's it. 
And against heavy units, I mean, that Zeus took out the entirety of the Felon Shields. And at the same time, the Crow coming in, having been fully repaired, it should be able to terrify all these Zeus's. It's going to drop the bombs right... No, not now, actually. It decides it's not worth it. Good call drone, that was not, that was definitely not worth it. That was not the time to use it, and you're right. But Felthos is going to... Well, they're going to go for the south. I mean, they have the Hawks over the south. A bit surprising they haven't gone for that Trident action. Sorry, not gone for the Crow. The Tridents are out of position. Where are the Tridents, anyway? They're all at base. Yeah, all the Tridents are back at base. That Crow is moving forward. Looks like Drone is going for a massive direct base assault. This is going to be a very long time. This might destroy their entire base. Not sure. Where are those Hawks? There are those Hawks. Feltos needs to... No, that's not going to work. Feltos needs to bring in those Hawks. I mean, I'm a bit surprised they didn't bring him in sooner. Does Feltos know? Yeah, they would have had radar. They would have had vision. But that Crow, going for the main base, going to take out the fusion plant. Going to take out the air factory. No, it's not going to take out the air factory. Oh, it might take out the air factory. Definitely takes out the fusion plant. But the Crow does go down. The air factory does ultimately go down. But that Crow, that's 1800 metal reclaim. There is a huge amount of metal reclaim here. And that Crow is going to pay for the fusion plant. So ultimately, that was a win for Failfoss. Like, they have a free fusion plant and a bit. Actually, between the fusion plant and the crow, they actually have two fusion plants. So if they want to rebuild it, that's no problem. They can easily do so. As well as rebuilding more factories. They have a strider hub now, because why not? Why do they have an urchin? That must have been a misclick. So we know that failed houses use integral menu, because in the integral menu, if you hit XC, you get the caretaker. If you hit CX, you get the urchin. That's probably why the urchin is here. And drone to the north with another attack. Another big attack, and it's going to be... Yeah, drone has a massive amount of reclaim. That's what all these contras, the, these convicts were for. That's actually most of drone's economy. Feldhaus right now, they do have reclaim as well, especially, like I said, the crow. Actually, that's a huge... That's 50 metal on reclaim. Wow. Or maybe 40, but still, that is a huge amount of their metal on reclaim. The Scorpion as well to get rid of this entire shield ball. Unfortunately, only gets rid of about half of it, so Felthos still has a lot to deal with. The Felons are going to probably be able to get rid of the factory. One of these Felons is going to go down. The other Felon's still in a fairly good position to attack, and it looks like this Felon over here is just going for the Caretakers, which is basically the main target. Not a bad idea. But there is Lotuses being built in Felthos's base. Because that's what happens when you have a bunch of convicts. That's the advantage of going Felon Convict Ball, is that you can build static defenses as you go. You can also repair as you go. But building static defenses as you go, that's a powerful thing. At this point, Drone is just... They are pulling through. I mean, Felthos right now, they don't have the north. They're, they have the south decently well, they have this southeast section. But Drone, they need to have... Like, Felthos needs to destroy this army. If Felthos does not destroy this army to the north, they're going to lose the game. That's all there is to it. Drone is going to be able to take this north side. This area has been kind of cut off. It's hard to support, but it's also hard to attack. But Failthos, they are like, they are being heavily pressured in the main base. They still haven't rebuilt their air factory or built any more than one factory. They still have their Kalokibot. They're pushing heavily Kalokibot factory, pushing heavy on repair, making darn sure they're not going to lose anything. While, on the other hand, Drone just pushing in thug after outlaw after thug after outlaw. They have their Kalokibot factory for the Zeus along the south, which... They are pushing forward as well. Got a nice Zeus line over in the south ridge. And of course they have the gunship plant. And the shield bot factory. And the air factory now too. Getting hawks as well. Whereas Felthots, they have the strider hub. They have their... Their cloaky bot factory they can build stuff with. But they aren't... They do not have the variety they might need. But maybe they don't. Maybe that's their entire point. They're just going to go for striders and cloakies. And just going to power through. That is going to be a problem for Drone. But I don't know if it's going to be that big of a problem. I mean, this Hawk, that's a bit of a waste. At this point, Feldos has no air. Or well, it has three Hawks, but that's about it. Feldos has very little air. Drone has a bit more air, so the air control is contested, but I don't think Feldos cares anymore. I'll, I'll know when they care when they start building another air factory, but they've basically been keeping these as scouting forces. They just want to know what's going on to the south that Drone is reclaiming. And Feltos losing a bunch of gremlins over to the south of these Zeus is for free. 
trying to take out what they can in this particular section, but that even that's not... I mean, they have the Sharpshooter. That's their best asset right now. Everything else isn't really able to get in fast enough due to the shield recharge strength. And these Rapiers are being a real pain. But the north side, that's what really matters. The Shield Bot Factory is in jeopardy. The Air Factory might go down as well. These Stingers are going to be a problem, but the Shield Bot Factory is dead. The Stingers are the main problem. That's, that's the main obstacle at this point. But even then, the Scorpion should be able to just tear those apart. Shield Bot Factory is down. The Commander is actually in a bad position, too. A level 3 Commander. Radar Jammer, Sunburst Cannon, Light Particle Beam, and a bunch of Nanolays. What's this build power? 24? 31! Wow. So that's two Caretakers and a Commander in one. Scorpion, however, needs to move back. Scorpion is going to go down. And, yeah, that's exactly what happens. So they got rid of the Shieldbot Factory, not the Air Factory. A little bit unfortunate there. And Felthas does care about air control. They have gone for another Air Factory. And they have no easy way of destroying the one that already exists. These Stingers are a pain. I'm a little surprised, all things considered, we have not seen a Missile Silo. Like, really. The fact that Felthas has not built a Missile Silo anywhere is... Actually, neither player have. But Felthos particularly, because Drone has been going for a lot of these well-protected firebases that Infernos would tear apart. Or Aeos's. Either one. There's no real defense against that. The only defense is really to take it out. But that's the thing. I think, why Why not? What? I don't know if Felthos is forgetting to do that, but it is something that it, it's not commonly seen. So that's probably what it is. It's not a common thing to see. It's not something that you're likely to think about off the top. But in this particular situation, it is kind of useful. It's a good base breaker. Good defense breaker. And Feldos, incidentally, has rebuilt the north side. They have rebuilt their base. They have gotten up their metal. But Drone has so much reclaim. They took all the reclaim fields. Feldos, by the time they took that same area of the map, they didn't really have any reclaim left. And there is still some reclaim left. But Drone has taken so much. Drone continues to take so much. I mean, Drone at this point, they have... How much? Yeah, they're reclaiming everything. And they have their own Strider Hub, too, because why not? But they are... I mean, 112 to 68, Drone is way ahead economically. Actually, they can't just be reclaimed. That's got to be Overdrive, too. This is at plus 2 point... This is at about 2 times. So, yeah, a lot of their... Looks like a lot of their Metal Extractors are very nearly 2 times power. At 1.5 to 2 times. So they're actually getting a lot out of Overdrive. They are getting a lot out of Reclaim, too. Over to the south, though, they are losing some of their Metal Extractors, but those are the weaker ones. Those are the ones they don't care as much about. At the same time, Feldhaus having to defend the entire south side. The north side basically going to Drone. Drone able to harass that out. Not much can be done. There are, of course, Gremlins, as always. But even with that, there's so many Hawks, it's becoming harder and harder for the Gremlins to deal with them. And now we have Drone. Drone going for the Missile Silo. Where is that? Over in the front lines. Nice positioning. There is, however, a Sharpshooter able to deal with this, and it's doing exactly that. Although, it looks like... Are the Cranes repairing? The Cranes are not repairing! These cranes are not repairing the missile silo. Why is that not happening? I'm really surprised. I mean, I thought they auto-repaired. It's not even... That's not a slight at drone. That's a question about the unit AI. I thought they would automatically repair, but I guess not. So this missile silo is basically one shot away from dying unless these cranes start being ordered to repair. It's gonna be about three or four seconds. And that missile silo will be no more, and that was an AOS too. And nope, that missile silo is down! Taking out most of the cranes as well. That is unfortunate. But I am kind of surprised. I thought that workers... I would thought that workers would be repairing things nearby if they're damaged. And the workers are idle. I think there's a widget for that, actually. There's an auto-repair-reclaim widget. And that was not enabled. <laughs> Which, if that was enabled, it would have actually been able to protect that. <laughs> and Drone just notices the lock lack of the silo in the game. The silo went to a sharpshooter, I'm afraid. Which, honestly, Failthos needed that. Like, if Failthos didn't do that, they would have been hooped. There would have been an Inferno or an Aeos in their main base, would have destroyed their caretakers, would have slowed them right down to the point that Drone would have been able to completely just barrel them over. Drone would have built up a large enough army in the meantime, as Failthos is rebuilding, that they would have been able to just completely steamroll Failthos. So, destroying the Missile Silo, that kept the game going. Failthos otherwise would have been in a very, very bad position had that not happened. Oh, Team of Team are pointing out the auto-repair reclaim, which is actually not particularly good in that single constructors can't really go out to build stuff. Because they keep turning around and going back to repair. Which is interesting. That's good to know. That's actually, it sounds like a bug in the widget. So whoever was maintaining that, it's good to know. 
But fail thoughts continuing along and once again tearing apart the main base. I mean, Drone, they have not cared about the main base since the beginning of the game. They have been focused entirely on this area here and subsequently on the area to the northwest. I mean, the southeast, the very, very southeast has also been a focus. Much easier to defend. Drone has been focused on these very easy to defend areas. But Felthos, they have managed to maintain the harder to defend center areas. And in doing so, they're actually, they've been ahead. Well, it's the head behind, the head behind, the head behind. It's going back and forth. I'm going to show the graph at the end of the game just to see how that's been, how that advantage has been progressing back and forth. At this point, Drone is actually slightly ahead militarily, slightly behind economically. I'd say very much behind in terms of positioning. In terms of how much damage that can be dealt, I mean, this Dante is a threat. But there's also two sharpshooters, three sharpshooters right here, and it's being forced back by a Zeus. So that Dante is basically dead. The rest of these forces, the Zeus's and warriors, or Zeus's and rockers coming in here. Oh, there are warriors too. Those forces can basically tear this apart. There's no commander to constantly rebuild lotuses. As like last time, there was a commander here. It was just building lotus after lotus after lotus to make sure that nothing could get in. That's not the case, but the bombers are still able to defend well enough. The sharpshooter, however, still able to get in here, still able to deal the damage it needs to, and hasn't been spotted out. Now this Dante, the Dante here, one more sharpshooter shot, and it's down. And none of the sharpshooters have been noticed. And it's two, one, down! That is a massive shame for Drone. It's back to even. Back to being even, and another Dante being built up. Looks like no further Scorpions being built up, though. And just in case, an age is being built up in case of Aeos's. Or Infernos. In case of Nuke, Failthos knows that is a very real threat, and is prepared for that. Good job, Failthos. Very good to see that. And a Scorpion coming in over to the southwest, taking out that southwest stinger, taking out the southwest... I mean, this entire southwest area is dead now. There's so little defenses that is basically... I don't know, actually, this is going to be defended. The stinger at the top of the hill, that's saved it. And the Scorpion goes down as a result, but overall, though, Felthos, what they need to do right now, they need to set up, well, I mean, at this point, Drone has spent a lot of air control on bombers. If Felthos were to go for more air, go for a lot of Hawks, taking advantage of the fact that Drone is not focusing on building Hawks, I think Felthos could retake air control, take out these bombers, maybe build bombers of their own, and just spread around, taking out all these metal extractors, like taking out four or five metal extractors in a pass at a time. Especially these outlying ones. But it looks like that's not even what their focus is. They're, fo they're doing the same idea, except on the ground. And that's working out very beautifully. Over to the north, over to the south. Everything is just going Felitas' way at this point. It's slowly but surely, though. It's a grind. It's definitely... They're pushing hard. I mean, Drone has set themselves up very strongly. And Felitas... I mean, let's just see something. I mentioned before about building the missile silo. But what... How does that relate to Felitas' territory? Let's see. So, if Feldhaus were to build a missile silo, the green, we can see, is seismic. So, attack nuke and EMP, that's here. Like, this hill, this hill would be a good place to put it. But that's barely in Feldhaus' territory. It would work, though. Like, right about here. But in order to do that, they would need to either terraform on the way up, or I think they might be able to build on top of the hill. But that would be tricky. However, I don't know if it matters, though, how many bombers are there? Like, almost two dozen bombers coming in here, tearing apart everything, ripping apart Feldhaus' main base. This is a massive blow. Feldhaus losing both of their fusion plants, a bunch of their caretakers, nearly losing their Strider Hub. Luckily for them, they weren't relying on that for their economy. I mean, they were relying on that for a bit of overdrive, but not so much. And they didn't have... What is their overdrive grid, anyway? I can't tell. I also can't turn off economy view. Yeah, that is really bugged. Anyway. Yeah, they're they're overdrive right now. It is doing remarkably well, but they or sorry, it was doing remarkably well. Now it's not doing that well, but they have enough energy, they can support their metal, it's not a big deal. They will recover. The caretakers are the bigger problem. They need to rebuild as many of those as they can so they don't excess. But the factories didn't go down. The main base as a whole didn't go down. The strider hub didn't go down, so they can still keep building up, and drone. How many bombers do they still have? They only have three. They lost most of their bombers in that run. That was a very all-or-nothing run, and I would say it, it veered more along to the nothing side of things. At this point, though, Drone, they're, they've been on the defensive for some time now, and they are getting more and more desperate on it. I, I really do think, just build a missile silo right here. That'd be so perfect. 
Actually, even right right behind that hill could work too. I don't think I don't think that's gonna happen. A crane could make it happen. I think a conjurer could actually do it. I don't think Failedoss is gonna think of it though. At this point, they don't seem to be that focused on trying to build up like that. They they seem to be focused on trying to build up basically on the ground. Build up an overwhelming army and just attack from there. I mean they're getting air control now. They have they have a four hawks, five hawks, compared to a grand I mean, how many hawks are there on Oh, never mind. Drone's gone for Swifts. Half a dozen Swifts. So at this point, Feldoss effectively has air control? Yeah, it looks like Feldoss effectively has air control. That's worth noting. Feldoss could take out these Swifts, could take out the bombers, and could put themselves in a position where they can build up bombers and they can start harassing. Shield Black Factory has been rebuilt. There are more bandits coming in, and Drone's commander did go down. Oh, wow, I missed that. That was that was during that big assault, I, I assume. That earlier assault from about five minutes ago. That is... That is still kind of bad for Drone. Like, Drone is... They're trying to push forward this Dante, trying to break through with that, but the Scorpion's going to stun it out. Right about now, actually. And now that Dante basically is going to get torn to shreds by Light Particle Beam, Bandit's going to help. But the Sharpshooter's in there. They're going to just tear it apart. That one more Dante that goes down. Another 4,500 metal. Or no, 3,500 metal. 3,500 metal that just went down with very little damage dealt to it. Or very little damage dealt for it. From it. This is... Like, Feltos is still pulling ahead. And they have... They have a secure lock on the eastern side of the map. Drone does not securely have the western side of the map. And neither player has a good way of breaking it. I mean, actually, that's not true. Feltos has some pretty good ways of breaking their opponent. And they've been using them several times. They haven't been able to use them as fully as they need to. Everything that Drone has, and they're really they're really paying attention, that's really precious to them, that's further back. Far enough back that it's basically impossible for Feldhouse to destroy that without already having won the game. And the game is still fairly even. Feldhaus ahead by 4,000 metal for military. That may not be enough, though. They are, however, they are even on economy, so it will come down to military losses. A lot of it, however, pretty much the entire advantage is this Scorpion, though. That's worth bearing in mind. There's an ultimatum coming up as well, and when that's done, it will even out. Because it's important to point out, this number, that only counts units that are produced. That doesn't count units under production, so if Striders are under production, it can actually skew the values. Because once the Striders produce, that jumps up by a few thousand metal. Regardless, though, Drone losing a lot of air forces, losing a lot of ground, ground forces as well. The Tridents, unfortunately, are out of position and idle. Now they're back in position. These Hawks are going to go down in a hurry. A few Tridents are going to die, but all of the Hawks are going to die. That's two, that's one, and that's it. The Hawk not even able to deal damage before it goes down. So a lot of Hawks died once again. But at the same time, over to the south, once again, Feltos breaking through the south. Breaking, I mean, the south, the very, very, very south, that has been broken through. It's been harassed. I mean, Drone has not taken that. Feltos hasn't really taken that either. I don't think either player... I mean, they want to get their metal extractors, yes, but I think at this point, they really want to get reclaim fields. Drone is focusing a whole lot on... So much on reclaim. This thing. 34... How much build power is this? Metal plus... Well, this is plus 10, but that was like half a dozen. That could have been plus 30. On the right wreck, that's plus 30. And Flores... Yeah, you have a point. This map... I mean, it's kind of interesting for 0k because it does... It does cause different things to happen. But it's also a map where Spiderbot Factory... And Jump Bot Factory can really do interesting things, but also where Air Factory just causes everything to be difficult to get around. Because if you're not playing Spider or Jump Bot, you really can't use these cliffs. You can't get through here. Like Spider and Jump Bot can, everything else can't. So these are hard choke points. But even then, I still think this is actually... I still give it more credit for 0k than you do, Flores. I, I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, this map... It does do some unique things. The fact that the start location is in the center, I think, does help out rather than having it in the corners. And also, the fact that you have like, you have the way to go back, but you also you have to harass around the back. And this is an unusual game. This is unusually long, honestly. A lot of it came down to the fact that, I mean, the missile silo was a big thing. A lot of it's coming down to the fact that the big plays that people have had that could have ended a game have been messed up due to inattention. And we had Drone with a sharpshooter here that it didn't pay attention to. You have the missile silo that wasn't paid attention to. 
You have the Hawks being thrown at Tridents for no reason. I mean, the Tridents kill the Hawks. Belthos, they have enough numbers they can beat the Tridents, sort of. But it's at a loss. There's a Peric victory at best. And not a whole lot... I mean, it's not a whole lot of Siege Breaking that's been set up. I think it's more that 0k players aren't that used to Siege Breaking. Because when you have wide open maps, you just attack from a different angle. Whereas a more closed map like Hide and Seek, you have to be able to attack not only from a different angle, but also using specialized forces. And Failthoss has adapted far better to this than Drone has, from what I can tell. Drone has built sharpshooters, but Failthoss has been building far more sharpshooters, building hammers. Surprisingly no ticks, actually. But at, this, at this stage in the game, it's too late. But still, it's a bit surprising that those haven't been built either. Ticks work beautifully on maps with the choke points. Like, a tick here, and a tick here, and a tick or two here. That would have been... and a tick up here, definitely. Those would have been extremely useful for keeping your opponent in check. But they would have had to be much more careful. But surprisingly, that didn't happen. But I think that's what it is. So it's not something that you can really say is not for 0k. It's just that current 0k meta isn't that well adapted for maps that are closed off like this. Or the maps that have it's mostly closed, like quite a few choke points, open areas, and choke points. I mean, I love the design of this map. I think it's just a matter of getting used to how it plays. Like, I love the fact that you start in the center and it can expand back, but the backside is harder to defend, so your opponent can harass it out. There's a lot of angles to attack from. Especially if you're using all-terrain factories, there's a lot of angles you can attack from. But even if you aren't, I mean, the fact the way the choke point open spaces interact, that works really nicely. It's just that the players aren't taking advantage of the choke points. No roaches, no ticks, no jump up for scuttles, or I get that's a little bit extreme. No... Not really much Missile Silo. Like, Missile Silo with Infernos on those choke points, that would also work beautifully. Like, we've had one Missile Silo, and that's been it. No one's really gone for it since. Despite the fact that it's a great Siege Breaker. We've had a few Hammers, we have a lot of Striders, that's good. And the Sharpshooters as well, and Drone now the one with the Sharpshooters, but they haven't... Well, one of them's got spotted out accidentally. Looks like the other two are gonna get... Well, no, they're gonna be able to retreat. The other two are fine. But one of them did get spotted out, so yeah, Cloak versus Cloak. Both the Scorpion and the Sharpshooter. But it's a question of whether or not the Sharpshooter will be spotted before the Scorpion gets killed, and it looks like the answer is... Th yes, I think. Sharpshooters are fairly slow. Sharpshooters have a speed of 43 almost per second. No, actually, Scorpions are slower than Sharpshooters. The Sharpshooters are just getting distracted on stuff. And that Sharpshooter is going to get spotted out. That one's dead. The Scorpion not going for it, though. The Scorpion is on hold fire? Nope, just wasn't going for it. But now, this southwest is in jeopardy. The northeast, however, also being heavily damaged. Drone going for that with the Thuglaw Ball. Thuglaw Felon Ball. The northeast is going to take a lot of damage. This is actually a bit of a blow. And Drone, at this point, also apparently had a lot of lag. Which is really unfortunate. Both CPU and... Oh, CPU lag and ping. Both problems. So, I... This, that was unfortunate. It's worth pointing out that drone right now is very lagging out. It's very much lagging out, so if anything goes wrong, especially inattention-wise, that's why. But it looks like they've managed to recover. One of the Scorpions down, another Scorpion's still alive, and that's going to be a retreat. There's no reason why Pildas is going to attack with this. Even with the support coming in, this is not good support against this army. A Hammer and a Rocco against two Zeuses and two Warriors? That is not going to work. The Scorpion, I... Actually, you know what? Given the setup, I think the Scorpion would be able to take this out. The Scorpion should be able to take out the Southwest on its own, so... Whether it retreats remains to be seen. Looks like it will, though, and it looks like also Drone going in, trying to attack... Continue to attack the Northeast. Got bombed out somewhat over the Northeast, but that is still a fairly decent harassment. Drone does have a massive economic advantage, primarily due to Reclaim once again. Although, nearly they are losing a lot of Hawks over the base of Felthos. But they are getting a lot of information at the same time. How many Scorpions are there? Okay, there's one in the south and one over the north. And more Tridents coming in. The Tridents are in a very vulnerable spot, trying to get rid of all of these Hawks, but they're getting rid of them on Felatos' turf. And losing some Tridents in the process as well. Another Trident goes down. Razors here are not something you want to deal with. It's Tridents. This is not working out well, and an ultimatum has been built up. There it is. It's hard to find. Taking out the base, though. Felatos losing their main base to an ultimatum. Or not quite. Losing the stride to having a bunch of caretakers to an ultimatum, though, that is still a major blow. And the thing with an ultimatum, as should be fairly clear, where's the reclaim? Yeah. Yeah. 
That it destroys reclaim. It is a cruel, cruel weapon. Hey, if there's anything, there's nothing else powerful about it, and there's a lot powerful about it. It's the fact that it destroys reclaim. But at this point, it's failed us. Not really on the back foot, but taking a bit of pressure. Drone able to get out of their bad position somewhat, able to build some units, able to harass out. The northeast being rebuilt, though, failed us not letting that go for long. And failed us also setting up to the south, or sorry, setting up harassment to the south. Their scorpion is still over to the south, does see these cranes, could take them out whenever they like. I mean, at their leisure, whenever they want, they could take them out. And over to the north, drones forces once again forced back. Losing a fell, oh, not really losing a felon, but it has to regroup at the very least. Losing a lot of thugs, though. Yeah, that's a lot of reclaim. All this reclaim is in Veldas' territory. How much reclaim is here? That's about 5,000 metal in this small area worth of reclaim. So, you know, whenever Veldas wants, they can just go for that. Also, we're curious. Has Veldas lost their commander? I, I don't recall seeing their commander explode. But then again, it might have just gone down in a massive explosion of something else. His drone's commander went down as part of a larger assault. I don't see Feltos's commander on the map. I don't see the eye. Oh no, dude! There it is. Feltos, their commander remains alive this entire time. They actually haven't. They've upgraded it twice, but it hasn't had any threat. And Scorpion once again getting rid of this entire shield ball. Well, at least setting up, stunning out most of the shield ball, tearing apart all their shields, and leaving them completely open for follow-up attacks. That. That's a blow. That's another good blow, and it doesn't take that long to re- This- okay. 20 seconds to reload this, I think? Or no, more than that. Like, 40 seconds. No, 30 seconds? Gotta be 30 seconds. It is... about 30 seconds to reload. Yep. And it's also- the Scorpion has to get out of the way that Dante is being too much of a threat. But that Scorpion is dead. Second Bomber comes in, takes out yet another Scorpion. Why is it going that way? Yet another Scorpion goes down, but even with that, Feltos still has territory. They are losing air control once again, but not very convincingly. I think that's Sharpshooter. Not Sharpshooter, I mean the Scythe. Is it F3 that does that? Uh, maybe, I don't know. I do not see a Scythe around here. Sorry, I think maybe it's F3? Nope, it's not F3. I don't know how to see what happens when a scythe happens. I can hear it, but I hear it everywhere. So I'm, no, I'm sorry, I don't know where that scythe was. But it's somewhere. Scythe the south? Oh, okay. I don't see it. Perhaps it has died. But anyway, good to know. If I hear that again, I'll look south. And drone... Once again, incapable of keeping Feldos down. Feldos, however, has... They have consistently kept this main base destroyed. They haven't really managed to get rid of anything else that Drone has built. They did take care of that shield by factory once, but that was only once. That was the only time that was dealt with. Feldos going over to the south side. Probably going to try to take care of this, this Kalukibot factory. They have several times, and... What? Oh, the center. Why are they doing that? They have everything they need to take out that south... That this is dead. This Kalukibot factory would be dead if they took it out. I'm very surprised, but it looks like no, they can't really go back in time to deal with these tridents or deal with these hawks. But the tridents are definitely the thing is overall because of the gunship plant and the air factory, drone has had a much easier time building up air forces, especially given how powerful tridents are as anti-air. I mean, they just eat hawks for breakfast. And the ground forces are now not in the best position. I don't know why Feltos moved there. Why they didn't go for the Glogobot factory. Why they didn't just take that out. Or go through this corridor and then attack. I mean, there's one stinger. That's it. I'm not sure if they're aware of that. I don't think they are. I think they think that drone has rebuilt the stingers that were there before. They were causing so much problems. I mean, most of the stingers are on the north side of the map. This is where drone has primarily focused their attention. And... Still surprised we haven't seen a lot of Siege Breakers. No nukes. I mean, a strategic nuke by this stage of the game, by an hour into the game? A strategic nuke 
would be kind of favorite. I would think that a strategic nuke would be rather handy to have, but it looks like neither player has even conceived of that. And down goes that brawler, at least. I mean, that's one thing for Feltos, but drone is... Drone remains pretty powerful in the air. And another brawler has been built up, and it looks like brawler's just being built up one like, for a minute. That is not good. That is not what Feltos wants. Feltos can't easily keep up the anti-air and continuing to go for Scorpions. They've been working fairly well, although I'm not sure at this point that would be the best thing to do. Like, Scorpions have been working fairly well. Given the all-terrain nature of the map, they do have a lot of flexibility in how they get around. I'm just starting to wonder if maybe it's worth it to either diversify out, like add in, maybe add in an ultimatum and basically do the same thing that was done to Feltos, tear apart the gunship plant or tear apart this factory, or tear apart the Cloakybot factory. Or if it'd be worth it to go for the Dante, the more direct force. Or if it'd be worth it instead to go for... I mean, I guess the Scorpion does kind of synergize with Cloaky. It does cloak. It does have AMP. It does basically work along the same lines. As opposed to just burning things up or hitting things and just dealing straight damage. So there is that. But at the same time, I'm not sure if it's dealing enough damage for what it's worth. Like, the Strider Hub... Well, catapult actually wouldn't be uh, okay. Catapult with support wouldn't be a bad idea. Funnel web might work. No, funnel web wouldn't work. Funnel web would be a terrible idea. That'd be death. And I suppose everything else is a bit too expensive to be worth it. So I guess that makes sense. A catapult, one catapult might actually do the trick though. As far as just tearing apart all this stuff, I mean that would be a siege breaker. Or not a siege breaker. A well, defense breaker. So I suppose I should be saying. Aircraft are missing ribbons. Oh yeah! They don't have any engine trails! And again, pointing out that the aircraft do not have their normal engine trails. I hadn't actually noticed that. That's a good point. Well, that's one of the nice things about having these videos, is that for if nothing else, they showcase the occasional bugs that get fixed real quick. Because they do, like, once, once they get shown, the bugs get fixed. And Drone, they're pushing one to south, they actually... Are they coming back? I think they might be, I think Feldhaus... Their constant loss of air forces and the fact that they have really not gone for anything to deal with the fact that Drone has twice the number of factors they do, has that much more unit variety. And also the fact that Drone has just managed to really take all the reclaim. I think that might start, that might be starting to get onto them. We'll see though, but it looks like Drone is taking out that south side. Yeah, pretty much entirely. Even this defended expansion over to the southeast, that's being taken out pretty soon too. This is... This is possibly turning around, but I don't know, it's still fairly even. It's hard to say it's turning around. The loss to the south side is a pretty big loss, but at the same time, we're getting yet another attack over to the north. Failthos continuing to build up that force to just try to break the north. But really, defense breaking with Cloakabot Factory is a tough thing. Sharpshooters do a wonderful job. Hammers do a good job. Zeus's can tank as necessary, and that's about it. Compared to, you know, missile silos or silencers or even stuff you can get off of a heavy tank factor. Although, heavy tank wouldn't recommend in this map. Or wyverns, even. But yeah, there's a lot that could be done in terms of breaking siege or breaking, breaking defenses that could be done that isn't being done. And it's a bit of a shame that's not being done, I've got to say. I really would like to have seen that happen, but I don't think that's going to happen. What I do think is going to happen is that Philthus is either going to be able to grind this out continuously, continuing to get rid of these naked expansions, getting rid of these conjurers, getting rid of all these builders, because, I mean, if you get rid of the conjurers, that's a lot of the economy. Drones' economy is primarily in conjurers, primarily in reclaim. And then get rid of metal extractors for good measure as well. I mean, if one of these factories go down, if Drone loses, especially the southwest, the center west, that's important. And the northeast is probably too heavily defended, or northwest is probably too heavily defended to try to take out. But the southwest is both important in terms of the sheer amount of power infrastructure that's being built here. I mean, that's about half of, well, okay, a third of drones' power. It's a lot of overdrive that's being done here. Because there's, they're at about two and a half times overdrive on this entire grid, which is, I think, the entirety of their metal. No, never mind. But it's still quite a lot of their metal. And the most valuable metal extractors. So if Feltos can break through this line, they can break through and tear apart that factory, that should do it. That should completely break Drone down. At this point, Feltos does have a massive military advantage. I still think most of that is probably Striders and Hawks, but they still have a massive military advantage nonetheless. 
But if they can tear apart these sharpshooters, once they do so, it's basically going to be a matter of whether they go to the southwest, whether they take out all this stuff here, and whether Dronin is able to build up defenses in time to stop that. If they manage to do that, and my goodness, we'll 6.4 off that one alone. Yeah, that's a lot of metal. So if they can tear this apart, then that is probably going to cripple Drone. I don't know if that'll end the game right there. It probably will. Drone might just throw in the towel if that happens. Well, that's good to know. It's a, it has hours. It's not just minutes. It goes in tens of minutes. It has an hour marker. I did not know that, the internal game timer had an hour marker. I think the one in the menu... Oh, no, that has an hour marker, too. Okay. So, yeah. Worth noting, I never knew this was the case. I've never played a game that lasted this long before, or watched a game that lasted this long before. I think the longest was in the high 50 minutes, but never an hour. Anyway, yet another Dante tries to come in, and once again, it gets completely shut down. I'm still surprised that... I mean, why hasn't Drone gone for that? Neither player has gone for missile silos again. Drone tried and didn't go once again. There's got to be a reason. There's got to be something I'm missing. There's got to be some reason why neither player has gone for missile silos or silencers or anything like that that would basically be something you couldn't deal with directly. Because neither player is expecting it either. No anti-nukes at all. Maybe it's because this map, there isn't really any good single targets. There's not a lot of good places you could just hit. You kind of have to grind around the map and tear apart what you can, but then again, Having the missile silo, not the silos, or just the regular silo to soften things up, like to burn things down, burn defenses down, burn caretakers down, or just to hit even just EMP, heck, a shockly would work pretty well. But to burn things down, or to otherwise soften an area up before your units come in, that would probably work fairly well. And it looks like the southwest is still not going to go down. It depends on the stinger. The stinger is able to go down. The second stinger, it's coming up. If the Cloakybot Factory goes down, that'll probably do it. This Stinger is going to be in range. Yeah, the, the, should say, the Scorpion's going to be in range of the Stinger. The Stinger is out of range of the Scorpion. And the Scorpion will be able to take out the Factory. So the Factory will stop producing, at least. But Drone, with Reclaim, continues to have an economic advantage. Militarily, though, they are way behind, but they are ahead economically. They just need to produce. And they need to survive battles. And over the south, or over the north, they're stopping Feltos from coming in, or at least trying to, but I think Feltos is going to break through. I think they have enough units just to push through. And the south has been lost, the Cloakabot Factory has been lost, the, all of these fusion plants are going down, that Stinger's going down, and that fusion plant, they're all going to follow soon after. And it looks like the north drone has lost their defense position on the north. Feltos breaking through, Feltos will likely get in here. And that's, once again, a bit more firepower from that Scorpion. Tearing about the fusion plants. Is that going to be death of Scorpion? Ooh, man, it's close. They've got to be really careful. Oh, no, they're out of the range. Okay, so they're fine. They they can survive this. They can hit. The fusion plants, on the other hand, cannot. And this is this is the crippling blow. But oh, that was the crippling blow. Drone has basically got one more shot, one more attempt to tear apart everything that Feldos has to stop Feldos from crushing them. But at this point, Drone is so far behind military, they've lost their advantage economically. They've lost a lot of what was powering that too, the reclaim and... Or sorry, the, not the reclaim, the overdrive over to the southwest. And given the military advantage, it's nearly a three times advantage. Felthos, short of a nuke, there isn't much that's going to stop Felthos. That's just how it's going to go. But that was a well-played game. Very even for the vast majority of the game. It was only right at the end where it ended up falling apart. It's just, you know, a few mistakes here and there. There's a few bits of inattention early on that would have made the game considerably shorter. But overall, both players managed to maintain themselves under pressure. Like, massive pressure the entire game. Both players losing their main bases several... Well, Drone losing it, not really re rebuilding. They didn't care about it. They cared about this. The Western Firebase, the south Northwest Firebase. Failedoss, on the other hand, lost their main base, or nearly lost their main base twice. Lost most of it twice. And they still rebuilt. They didn't lose a lot of this area, though, and Feltos, I haven't really paid attention to their economy much. They don't have much reclaim, or, sorry, much overdrive. Like, 0.5 times, or 1.5 times, roughly. Not a huge amount. And Drone with yet another Dante. This is going to be the final Dante. It's either going to work, or it's going to, it's going to basically motivate Drone to, to GG, and I think Drone's going to GG after this. I think we'll see a surrender, because the Sharpshooters are going to stop it. Although the structures are being revealed, but it's not being followed up on, and despite the sheer number of Hawks, that was not really the right option. That was not really the thing to go for. 
I mean, Felzas doesn't really care about the air. They care about ground. They've been caring about ground for the last 20 minutes. They've hardly built any air. They built a bit, but they've pretty much given up on air. And they've just been focusing on making a massive ground force, especially a massive ground strider force. And Drone throws in the towel. Felzas runs it back. And that was... That was an extremely long game. I hope you enjoyed that, because... Holy crap, that was... That was long. So, as I was saying, metal produced. Oh, actually, drone. Wow! Drone had an economic advantage on average throughout the entire game. They made more metal the entire game. Warzone paused. They accessed less metal the entire game. Teltas actually accessed a little bit more. They had 5,000 excess compared to 3,000. Okay, just gotta point this out. This was over the course of 67 minutes, and they only accessed 5,000 at most. 5,000 and 3,000. That is amazing. Like, 70 minutes, that means that at any given moment, I mean, that, that says, that's a fair amount. But that's like one extra, one extra strider throughout a 70 minute game. Like, oh, incidentally, there's a bug over here, worth pointing out in the end game stats, 167.16, this should be a zero. I'm guessing it didn't, I'm guessing no one's ever actually seen this, but yeah. When you go to hours, make sure to drop the minutes by, or mod the minutes over 60. Hey, minutes modulo 60, you need to do that. Anyway, yeah, this, if you consider on average, like per minute being accessed, it would work out to about 80 for Phalathos and about 50 for Drone. 50 metal per minute excess, on average. So every minute they might have been able to get an extra glaive. Both players. That is extremely small. It's not zero, but it's very small. And similarly, energy, it looks like Drone was actually ahead the entire time. Drone, however, was... Oh, I see, that's what it was. So, throughout the entire game... Yeah, it looks like early, early on... So, if you look at really early on, it was actually neck and neck until... Looks like about the 20-minute mark, and then Drone started pulling ahead. And they really were. It doesn't show Reclaim, though. But yeah, Drone was really ahead throughout the beginning of the game. It actually was accessing a fair amount at the beginning, and then accessed far, far less at the end, whereas Philthos... They accessed nothing. Holy crap, they accessed absolutely nothing until about 30 minutes into the game. Had a mass... Uh, there are 3,000 metal excess. I think that was probably when they lost a lot, a bunch of stuff in the first place, when they lost a bunch of caretakers. Because they were... I mean, the excess is largely because they were forced excess. They couldn't... They could not build. But yeah, if you look at units lost, Drone and... Anakin pointing out, Drone had an 80% attrition rate. Like, Drone lost 300 extra units. Compared to Phaelthos. So despite the fact that Drone was able to get 40,000 extra metal. 300 extra units. Even if it was just 300 extra glaives or something. That would still be a grand total of 15,000 metal. And that's not including the fact. I mean, there's still other units. More expensive units. So that really was where it came to. Is that Phaelthos. They didn't have the stronger economy. But they had the much better use of tactics. That they had a strong enough economy that they could win by tactics. And actually, they built fewer units, too. They are building a lot more heavy units, and they are building a lot more units that ended up surviving. Other than their air force, Phaelodos' air force couldn't do anything. Like, they just kept getting slaughtered by tridents. But everything else? Drone ended up losing more units overall. So really, that's what it came down to. Drone had better economy, but slightly worse tactics. And Phaelodos had better tactics and slightly worse economy. And the slightly better tactics ended up just eking out the win. And yeah, also Dante's... That was the biggest waste too. I think that's mostly where that... The discrepancy between units lost and metal produced or metal used is. The discrepancy there... Or metal used is the more important one. The discrepancy there is largely the Dante's. The Dante's are about 3,500 each. And there were at least five of them that just died doing nothing. There was at least 15,000 metal just in Dante's doing nothing. And then, not only did they do nothing, they also went into Phaelthos' base and then died. So they gave Phaelthos metal. So it was just a big donation of metal. Like, that, that was a major loss. And that's the biggest thing to take away from this, is that while economy is very important, keeping units alive is also very important. If you're at the point where your economy is fairly solid, unit management becomes key. That is how Phaelthos won. I still think a catapult wouldn't have been a bad idea. I still think missile silos would have been a good idea to continue investing in. Like that one missile silo over here, that 
that missile silo right here, like I said, that would have given drone the game. Most likely. It would have been allowing it would have allowed them to just nuke out Feldos's base with very little pretty much nothing to stop them. If those cranes had been on repair, that would have been it. The sharpshooters would have had to kill the cranes, it would have been more time, it would have been at least one or two nukes, and then drone could have gotten follow-up forces in there to hunt out that sharpshooter and take it out. And at that point, drone would have basically had the game. And then once again, the sharpshooter early on, and then Feldos, when they had the advantage position, ticks, ticks, ticks. Like there's a few things that I think I think what it was is that the players, they were kind of playing along CCR rules. I mean, admittedly with cloakies rather than light vehicles or heavy tanks, but they were playing CCR rules. They were playing Red Comet rules. They were playing as if it was a flat map. I mean, there was some choke point defense that was being done, but it wasn't as major as you'd expect. Like I said, nothing that, no mines, no ticks, no, well, stingers in the hills, I guess. Like nothing that was really, or there it is, I guess. I don't know. Things that are not super powerful, or Stardust actually too. Stardust would have worked fairly well. Especially early on. It's like nothing that really would have allowed units to just not worry about those areas. Like the player wouldn't have worried because they would have had defense turrets there or would have had mines or there, would have had something that takes advantage of the fact that this is a choke point. Units cannot go over these cliffs. They cannot go over these hills. Unless they're using Spiderbot Factory, they can't do anything other than go through that choke point or go through a different choke point. So that was something that I think slowed the game down the most was the lack of choke point defense. And similarly, the lack of respecting the choke points in terms of how much you need to do to break through them, and then when you break through them, how to make sure to continue your siege along as you go through. And the fact that your opponent has a lot of defense. They have a lot of stuff that's going to stop you from getting through. But anyway, that was a very interesting game. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed whatever three-course meal you had while watching it. And that will be it for me tonight. This is the only game I was going to do today because I knew it was going to be very long. I think this will be one part on YouTube. I don't think I'm going to make this a two-parter. I think I'll make it a one-parter. Hopefully that works for people. Anyway, thank you once again for watching. Enjoyed that. I certainly did. It was actually, despite the fact that it was kind of a grindy back and forth match where it not much moved for about 20 minutes of the game, there was a lot to pay attention to. The There was just a lot that was just so close where if a player just slipped up and lost units, and it happened several times where a player slipped up, lost units, and ended up losing a lot more than they needed to. Like One mistake could have happened, and did happen in many cases, in both sides. Both players, just, they made one mistake where they ended up losing more a bunch of units, and then turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. It kept, it kept going back and forth. There wasn't a lot of territory movement, but there was a lot of unit movement. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Have a good night, everyone.